Hi there, and welcome to a new Plugin Guru video. My name is John Skippy Limcool. Glad to have you with me. I'm wrapping up the work on this library. I have a couple more days, but I got a demo done this weekend that I want to share with you. So I'm going to play you a demo called Triumphant. This is using one, two, three, four, five ESX24s and nine parts from Omnisphere. It's requiring one Omnisphere that's doing eight parts. And it's requiring an additional Omnisphere that's doing just one sound from the Omniverse 3 library, this big drum hit. I also have some interesting routing you'll want to maybe observe what's going on. There, uh, from the Omnisphere library, let's see where's Omnisphere at, right here. It's being routed to a number of additional auxiliaries over here for use with the glue to give you some pulsing uh, to kill bass. And also, it also is going to be used, as you can see right here, on this ESX24 part for this chord part. When the kick drum comes back in, you'll hear this pulsy on the pad. So this pad sound is normally... You're going to hear a pulsing on it. I'll play all those sounds. I'll give you more details. We'll solo some parts in a minute. I want you guys to learn some of this stuff because I worked really hard to get this I think mixed right. I'm, I'm not a super professional mixer per se, uh, but I have a lot of stuff going on and want to share it with you. So see if this is useful and helpful to you guys. Uh, here we go. This is triumphant. I'm going to kill my microphone and then play. Kind of epic. Hopefully, that's the idea. Okay, so let me talk about this a little bit, and then I gotta get back to work. So, this is to show off pads, and I didn't want to layer too deep because with pads, you gotta be careful. It's really easy to use two or three, and all of a sudden it's mush. And so there's some selective notes being used and not being used. And there's tricks where high notes can be have shorter releases than the lower notes because those will fade out faster for the melody parts to stand out a little way. So if we look at some of these parts, um, here, let's play from the beginning. This is the uh, opening pad is from two sounds. It's from String Eternus, which is the string pad of the library, um, and actually has a fast attack. Uh, so real quickly, Mega Magic Pads is this library that I'm bringing out. And what I really wanted to do was, A, all the sounds are made in the box using only Logic Pro and plugins. 
inside of Logic. There's no recording of any of my outboard gear. I wanted to make it in the box, see if it could be done to make new pad sounds because so many people have recorded their viruses and all this stuff. I want new source that no one's heard before. So it's all new. But like uh, String Eternus, if we go over here to, there it is. If we look at it, it has a little bit of a fade in on the attack. If I bring this all the way down, what's it at? 0.89, if I bring it down. So there is an attack there. So a lot of the library has attacks to the sounds. A lot of them are pad shapes because there's a certain way I like pads to play. And a lot of times the envelopes, especially when I'm trying to make this for lots of libraries, it doesn't work very well. So I use String Eternus. String Eternus is the string pad of the library. It actually has a faster attack, but I softened it a little bit in Atmosphere, so. As you can hear, these incredible effects, right? There's no reverb on the sound. It's totally dry as far as ambience goes. All these pads that you're gonna hear are totally dry. The ambience I recorded in, that's the mega magic part. That's kind of the concept for these sample libraries is that the effects that make these really lush is recorded into the sounds. So it's, you call it up, that's how it sounds. And then you can use the mod wheel to make a bazillion dark, warm string pads. Okay, just awesome. So it's using that and it's using Battleborn, which is a sound that's just super Right. <laughs> it wasn't because the mod wheel. So I use this a lot. You'll hear some sweepy parts where you hear the... That's just playing with the mod wheel on the sounds. So let's play the string and battleborn. Oh, string and battleborn. Solo them. So here's those two together. Hear that? That brightness is because of using the mod wheel. And I, you can hear the voicings. I, there's not a lot of stuff in the middle. It's all high and low because when you're trying to make a big mix, if you have it all just huge, really rich chords right in here, it's gonna be mush, especially when you add other parts and the effects and so forth. Um, let's look at the effect real quick. This is really cool. This is a, so the Omnisphere library comes with a whole bunch of bonus patches. And I, I was very fortunate to talk to Airwave Laurent Verones, a wonderful soul in Brussels, and he was able to make some patches and some really fun patches. Um, itchy and scratchy is a sound that just does all this cool ring mod stuff. Actually, it's granular. There's no ring mod. It sounds like it. It's another one of those cases where you have to study his patches carefully to know what's making this sound. Okay, but what I did that was kind of fun with this is I faded in and out with volume. So if we go to the automation and we look at um, part eight level, it's there and then it's gone because I want it just to like accentuate for a second. So if we play this and the pad now together, uh, let's see, this, this, and Battleborn. Solo. It comes in. 
this down. Oh wait, we're in the wrong part. There it is. And then it's out. And it comes back in. So, that's used for just dramatic moments and then get out of the way so that the pads with their chord parts can play. If it was playing the whole time through the chord parts, it would sound horrible, right? So you have to learn how to use automation when you're working with pads, when you're working with special effects, things of that nature. Um, from there, there's Airwave Kick. And I should actually show, so you didn't hear a whole lot of bottom. There's a little bit of bottom. In fact, there's actually a chord that sounds wrong. I'm going to see some. That's right. Oh. That's what it is. That is conflicting with the other notes. So I'm glad I fixed that. I haven't mixed this final demo yet, so that's... So there's this bass part, Pulse. And uh, actually, Kid Anthem originally made this bass, and I worked on it some. And then for this, I wanted to have a pulse. So I, I made a BPM version that's got a... Just a little bit of a pulse, right? But when the kick drum comes in... I'm going to actually solo these other parts, too. So when the kick hits... I'm using the glue and sidechain compression because that bass is so big, I want the kick drum to take off and not have this bass. So, if you look at this, let's see, he's routed. Actually, we gotta look on the mixer page because it's kind of tricky routing. This part is being routed solo. Right here. So, if I take this guy and I look at the glue. Hear how it's big? Boom, 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 boom. That's what I played. But you add the kick drum to it. And see how I'm side I'm just side chain compressing the daylights out of it. Because the rule is when you have a huge kick drum, you can't have bass hitting with it. You just you can't. To make the mix sound like this, you want that kick, you know, how you listen to a record and you go, oh, I love that kick drum. And listen to how you hear it the whole way through the song. It's because everything else is gone when that kick hits. It's just got this complete wide open space to play and you don't hear anything else. And the way you do that is side chain compressing. And the glue is really great. It's got presets right here. If you uh, click and say presets, go to side chain. They have two choices right here. And all you do is control the threshold to control how deep of a you want it to have. Um, I'm using that also. Let me show you the other place where I'm using that. There's a, so if we keep these parts going, keep the character going, there's also this other cyclone part that comes in. Um, so it's, it's side draining the days out of it. Now here's another bass part that comes in. He has his own side chain compression going on. Oh wait, no he doesn't. <laughs> there, now he does. <laughs> you guys caught me on making him boo-boo. I forgot to set that up. Wow, I'm so glad I set that up. Okay, so yeah, it needs to do that. I was wondering why it wasn't. So I'm gonna turn up some makeup on that so it's a little bit louder. Let's get in the mix. Okay, well, that was a mistake fixed. So I, fi I have fixed two mistakes. I'm so happy I'm doing this. This is great. 
So Epic Fall is a, it was originally a pad that Laurent made, um, Airwave. It's in the library that's a pad sound. It's got this, it's got that, um, but it changes speeds as you go up and down the keyboards. It's, it's kind of wacky. I'm not sure how useful, you have to use it very sparingly and carefully and I don't know. But I took it and I made it into a BPM, so no matter where you play. And then I set the mod wheel to basically deconstruct it. And right here, alias is out. So to get that really cool falling apart sound, all it is is using the mod wheel. So if I solo this part and you hear it. And it just, it magically quantized to have that kind of feel to it. And then I wanted a breakdown. And so I'm using, um, now it's Mega Magic Pads, right? This is the synth version of a patch that's in the library. So one thing about the library, I'll give you a little insight that's really cool. Um, and one of the reasons why it's taken so long to do this so the whole library, if you go to Mega Magic Pads, there's pads, slow attack pads. And then there's synth, which is fast attack. Because every slow attack, if you go to the loop only, it's nice and snappy fast. So I was like, well, why not make a really cool synth with each one of those? Then, this is the part that's taken forever. I went, well, I've got the Reason version, ESX24, Serum, Contact 5, and Omnisphere. And I'm making these synth parts, these patches are the same with all five plugins. <laughs> I don't know why. <laughs> anyway, so it's taken a long time to make these. I'm more than halfway done, but I, I, I've got my master synth patch. And then I have to make that same patch four other times in four other plugins. So it's taken a long time. Then I have the owner's manual and I have additional videos and vi I have to do the website. I, I do it all. It's just, it's just me. I do, it's my business, my company, my thing. So this is the synth version, which has the fast attack of Spiteful Spirit Dry. So you can hear. Because I learned a long time ago, I've made pads forever. All the core synthesizers that have some epic majestic pads, a lot of them are mine. That's just one of the things I love to make. So one thing I learned is that things that have fast attacks make really cool slow pads. So if you go to Spiteful Spirit, Dry, um, and I want to use this version right here, and see how the attack is up? So I've taken that attack that was really at zero, and now it's... That fading out of a cool attack makes just unbelievable pads. So there's a number of sounds in the library. Um, if we go to Guitar Tronics, for example, this is another guitar patch that's... Right? But if you go to the synth, there's two versions. There's Guitar Tronics 1. Version 1 has the original sample. Version 2, and these are the ones that are taking a long time to make between five different plugins because this is the loop only being used to make a... And some of these... Uh... Like that's Interstellar. Now Interstellar is one of these huge sounds like... Uh, un this is one of those epic where it's... Uh... Stellar. I'm on dry. So here. Here's Interstellar. <laughs> Just unbelievably huge. This one here, I use a little bit of fade in attack, but. For a lot of the sounds in the library, I'm using just the attack that's in there. So I need to get this back to Spiteful Spirit. Okay. So all that is is that part playing a... And then you'll hear this. So check this out. Oh.
Oh, and that part right there, that's using pastoral, which is it's just really warm. Um, I added Universal Audio Millennium and the voice of God, which is this just, you can dial in the low end with this plugin so that it hits just the sweet spot. So when it hits, and I actually, I got it down to just one note, I think. I didn't want it to be octaves. I wanted it to just be this boom, solid, just, oh my God, where'd that low end come from? So that part comes in. Um, but I wanted to show you this, and then I'm going to get back to work. I, I keep hitting the wrong key commands. I, I used to know Logic's key commands really well and could get around and not seem stupid, but uh, they've gotten tricky lately. So let's solo these two parts so that so that when the kick drums in comes in, you're going to hear first without the pulsing, and then you'll hear the pulsing. So here's without pulsing. The kick hasn't started. and I can bring up the threshold. So that way you get this pulse. So a lot of people say, well, where's that patch in the library? Because I hear this pulsing thing, right? It's done through effects. It's not something that's actually in the library doing it that way. It's the natural, real, that side compression. The only way to get that is from using a compressor to really get it. And then towards the end, a couple of things. So there's two top loops that are just taken from a sample library. Um, there's that one. From two different libraries. One of them I've had for 25 years. Um, Transfusion. And then this is the wardrobe, a library I did called, um, where is it right here? From Omniverse 3, it's this big war drum. Oh, let me get so I can play it. Right? So if we go to measure 52, here's the sweep and the noise together. So those guys are used. And if you use, here's them in, in conjunction with everything else. Pianos in the Clouds is one of my favorite pads from the library. It's this beautiful. And the manual, I have screenshots of every Logic channel strip setting that was used. Not that you can see what they are, but you can see what was used. I don't show you the settings. But I have saved the pads. So I, a lot of times I make stuff and I forget what I made, but I didn't want to forget these. Anyway, so I think in three days this will come out. Sorry, it's taken longer than expected. By the way, I got to hang out with my mom and dad this weekend, which was awesome. This is my mom and dad and my dog, and uh, we had a good time. Um, so thanks, I, I took the weekend off, which at, at this point when trying to make a library, you usually don't do that, but it was nice to do that and see family. Okay, so I'm gonna get back to work. So that's triumphant, and I uh, hope you like it. And uh, I'll let you guys all know by Facebook and my email the second the library is available. And uh, thanks for watching. <laughs>